let's uh, jump out of the, uh, the pedagogy d discussion and, and start talking about some technology and gear. Um, what gear have you started using or, or software uh, for making your videos? Let's start with David. Yeah, so for my, uh, for my video uh, recording, I use, well, I guess we all got a microphone in front of us, but mm -hmm. uh, I think this is one of the most important things is to get a, a high quality sound. And uh, I remember experiencing, you know, increased uh, uh, sound quality for the first time and, and realizing, you know, how much that improved my video, you know, the, the um, watchability, I guess, of the videos. Um, I also use, uh, I record with my laptop mm -hmm. and I have a program on here called ScreenFlow. Um, that I just use to kind of um, uh, take my my videos and kind of insert them into my onto my slideshows in the uh, I guess that would be like the post production kind of mm -hmm. aspect. Um, but yeah, then I, I just walk around with my with my laptop, uh, record the video through through um, through the laptop using ScreenFlow, and, and I can kind of piece it all together at the end. So you're actually using your laptop as the camera as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is, I mean, there's not a whole lot of equipment necessarily to it or, or yeah, it's, it's that no, and that's one of the great things that, uh, that the, the barrier to entry to getting some good quality capture is, has become very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ira, what equipment are you using? So I started out uh, in a very similar, um, I think I, I started out with screencast, but actually when I first started, it was just quick time screen grab. And I was actually holding a digital recorder and trying to then sync them up later because I can edit video. So I, I would sync up the, the audio. Um, but actually what I've moved to is I, I'm working with Camtasia. Mm -hmm. And uh, the latest version, actually, I don't. I think there's another update. I haven't uh, uh, updated to the very latest. But uh, about a year ago, Camtasia came out with a new version that I found incredibly functional. And what I like about Camtasia, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and share my screen and show you. An no, go for it. So here is a. Uh, let's see here. So here is, um, actually this was a video that I put together when I realized um, in looking at some student work that they weren't fully grasping the concept that they were trying. So mm -hmm. I went and put a, uh, I gathered some of my, my images and, and put together a little presentation here. And what I like about Camtasia is you have these different kinds of annotations um, that you can drop into your screen. So I could drop something in here uh, anywhere on the screen and uh, you know just add whatever text I want on there. Uh, this is a near uh, far juxtaposition right and what's interesting is and I've gone ahead and put some some uh, animations here but uh, here I'll just play a little segment here. So what I'm able to do with that is I'm actually able to diagram on the screen and later on or in other other areas of presentations going to, for example, a uh, here's a um, just pulling up uh, some information from the web and then being able to emphasize it with kind of a you know, an animated drawing, so to speak. So I can surprise the student instead of just a, you know, traditional um, slide deck. In fact, let me go back to where I actually might have a, a slide deck here. Uh, that's, that's, you know, what I like about this is I was able to do some screen uh, capture of just some search uh, ideas on the web and then pull up some information right. and, and, and uh, create some emphasis to it. Uh -huh. But these animations allow me to um, add that kind of element of surprise that keeps them alert and paying attention uh, through the presentation. I'm not finding, I, I didn't do, this was not a formal presentation with a slide deck or a PowerPoint. Uh -huh. But when I do my PowerPoints, um, I'm always highlighting different facets of the screen as I'm talking it through. Um, I'm not the best at doing all the animations of, of PowerPoints, so this kind of helps compensate for that. Okay. And that's what kind of what we were saying earlier of, you know, you're able to do what you would do in class with show, I want to show this picture, but I want to diagram it. And, uh, but you're also kind of building it out in real time as well, which is kind of cool. 
The other thing I really like about Camtasia is, you know how we have the, the talking head in the bottom right corner? Mm-hmm. Um, what I uh, found, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that Camtasia handles it really well, I can actually stretch the talking head to fill the screen. Mm-hmm. So when I'm between segments or if I'm giving kind of a wrap-up reflection or, or an introduction to a topic, yeah. um, I will fill the screen with the whole talking head so that they feel like they're, it's a little more conversational. Right. Uh, and so I'm able to jump back and forth between uh, the little head and the, and the slide deck. And then I will tuck the, the, uh, uh, the talking head away when I really want them to focus on just what's the content on the screen that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes separating out the voice from uh, the source really allows you to pay attention uh, in more detail. So these are just some of the things I'm learning as I go. Yeah. And, and I get feedback from my students of what helps them feel more connected to the material. Yeah, it's an old filmmaker's trick of guiding the viewer's eye. You know, here's what I want you to see now. Here's what I want you to see now. Um, you know, and so when you, if you put the face on there, they're going to look at the face and, and, and uh, you know, pay attention to you. And if, if you're talking about something that's also on screen, you can have both. But like you said, you can move it around or edit it so that they're seeing exactly what you want them to see, uh, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like the multiple tracks that Camtasia gives me. They're really easy to use. Mm-hmm. What, uh, David, on the, as far as editing, I know that ScreenFlow is virtually the same software as, as Camtasia. In fact, the newest version of Camtasia has pretty much brought them in parity uh, with each other. Uh, Camtasia runs on both uh, Windows and Mac. Uh, ScreenFlow is only on the Mac, so that would be the, the, uh, the difference at this point. What other uh, aspects of that ability to edit and do a little bit of post-production have you seen and does that bring value to your videos? Um, Yeah, uh, I think for me, uh, the post-production editing part is actually, it's pretty simple, I I find for, for, I've never used Camtasia, I imagine it's it's the same. I don't add a ton after I'm done recording, it's more adjusting the size of of the talking head and and, uh, I try to to limit the amount of stuff I do afterwards, just because I, I feel like I could spend hours and hours and hours doing that. And I, and I, I, I got to kind of, at some point, I feel like you have to put a cap on it. I mean, I, I, can, I can be a real perfectionist in, in certain times, but I feel like I have to sometimes just put that away uh, just for the sake of, of getting uh, a project done on time. And, and uh, so that's one of the things I like about ScreenFlow is it, it is really, really simple to use. You don't have to do any or substantial post-production editing if you don't have to, but you can. And I think the same is probably true with Camtasia. Um, so yeah, I, I don't do a ton with it um, afterwards, uh, but I think that's something, something I'd like to do. And maybe, you know, as I get better and better at it, I'll, I'll probably start adding more, more to it. Um, yeah, no, both of those software have uh, incredible capabilities. And one of the things that I found when I started doing it was, uh, you know how when you, f- you start using anything, any for me anyway, you, 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 you uh, swing your pendulum to the extreme and then you come back to a balance point, right? You know, so the first, probably the first couple of videos I did had all these animated things and, you know, resizing things floating around the screen, arrows flying in with the sound <laughs> effect, you know? Um, and then you slowly realize that that doesn't add a whole lot of value to your students. You know, having the arrow does, having the motion and the sound effect probably does it, you know? Uh, but like you said, you could spend 10 minutes programming in that motion to be just right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you, you find that happy medium of what's actually bringing value and what's yeah. just a gimmick. Um, but certainly that ability to do a little bit of editing. Have, um, have either of you used Panopto? And, and why choose a, a, a more advanced thing like uh, Camtasia or ScreenFlow rather than what Panopto can offer for you? I'll, I'll jump in on that one mm-hmm. because it relates to something I was uh, going to share just a moment ago. And that is um, I do spend a lot of time editing because frankly, I need editing. Uh, it's probably one of the best benefits to my students is this process forces me to listen to myself mm-hmm. as a lecturer, as a presenter. And um, it, it really makes me, narrow the scope of my presentation material to exactly what they need to learn as opposed to me waxing on poetically about uh, minutia, I'm able to really catch myself more effectively. And so uh, I think that's what, you know, 
Panopto, I felt required. I, it just didn't have the, the, uh, the editing functions I felt I needed uh, because my students need me to edit myself. And I think it's making me a better face-to-face -face teacher mm -hmm. uh, because I'm getting, more, uh, I'm getting more of an experience of what they're experiencing. Uh, and I'm able to just narrow it down just to what they need. Uh, and then, you know, for those that want more, great. I've got a, a wealth of resources to it, but I'm able to really measure, narrow it down to what's, what's the measurable learning outcome that I expect them to have. Right. Yeah, I've used uh, Panopto a few times as well. I do really enjoy the, the simplicity of it, but uh, yeah. I think I'd echo with what Ira says. It is nice to have just a, some uh, some extra features that you can add in in things if you need to, mm -hmm. and uh, you definitely get that out of Camtasia or or ScreenFlow like like I use. Um, so yeah, I just like the option of of having to to uh, edit a little more. If I need to. Well, and I think for some faculty that may actually bring a little bit of relief too. Of I don't have to perform perfectly because the camera's on, you know. I can, if I say, um, too many times, you know, not that you want to go in and edit out every, um, but, um, uh, if the phone rings or if something major happens, I can go in and cut it out or I can, you know, piece together two sessions from, you know, two different days if I need to. And I think that's where the value comes of just being able to really hone the content. I mean, both of you have said that the, the value of creating your own video was that you could be really specific about the content. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe another instructor is teaching the same lesson, but I want them to teach, I want them to do these steps in this order. Or, you know, at our school, we have a policy where it, we want homework turned in like this. Or, you know, the other instructor kept referencing Blackboard while we use Canvas. You know, having that ability to, to be real specific mm -hmm. um, and the editing for content purposes, it, uh, like you said about cutting things down to be precise and to be accurate, I think is really valuable there. Mm -hmm. Which can also be done in Panopto, but it's not quite as... Uh, quite as easy.